historical lens. I'm Evelyn Weaver, and I have the economic lens. And I'm Curtis Rabatten, and I have the scientific lens. Our group's topic was the divestation of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, or NASA. In 1996, NASA's annual funding was $30.4 billion. This has decreased over time, arriving at $19.9 billion now in 2019. Despite this decrease, the space industry as a whole has proven itself important to American society in multiple ways. It has historical value, considering that NASA was created to provide public services such as um, scientific discoveries, national, national security and patriotism. It has scientific value, with NASA providing things such as worldwide telephone and GPS services. And the space industry has economic value, bringing in a $300 billion annual revenue. Not only that, but recently multiple multi-billion dollar privately owned companies such as SpaceX and Orbital ATK have gotten involved in the space industry. The relevance of the space industry to our modern society led us to our research question. Should the federal government continue to provide funding for NASA? Based on our research, we concluded that there should be federal budget cuts to NASA due to its historical purpose and monopoly on the space industry. We're going to start off with Rihanna with the historical one. Thanks, Evelyn. Through my research, I came to the conclusion that the government's funding of NASA has led to advancements, but continuing to fund this program may not be the best option. First, we can see that through the historical context, NASA no longer needs to be funded. NASA was created in the 1950s for the space race against the Soviet Union, which reached its peak during the 1960s. According to <coughs> authors Julia Maller and Maureen hagen Cosmic, they explained that during the Apollo era, federal funding was greatly increased for NASA. This makes sense because the Apollo era was during the peak of the space race. We can see that through pre-research data, this is a true statement because NASA is receiving 4% of the federal budget at this time period. NASA also no longer needs to be funded because if a disaster strikes, all the funding that was just put into the organization would now be lost. Two historical examples that come to mind is first, the Challenger disaster of 1986, and second is the Columbia disaster of 2003. Mallory and Cosme explained that both of these disasters could have been averted if more caution had been used when creating the spacecraft. University of Wisconsin-Madison graduate and author Mitchell M. Malchuk explains that after the, these disasters, the government had to make hard decisions about whether they could continue to fund NASA or not. It can be seen through Pew Research data that they decided to no longer fund NASA because NASA now receives 0.5% of the federal budget and, as mentioned earlier, used to receive 4% of the federal budget. A solution that could solve the debate over whether or not NASA should continue to receive federal funding could be to allow private space companies to take over space exploration. Author Marine Venture explains that in 2008, quote, NASA paid SpaceX to deliver supplies to the International Space Station, end quote. This is the first step in allowing private space companies take, to take over space exploration. A limitation to the solution would be that the government would not have complete control over what goes on in space, so they would have to create a way to regulate space activity. An implication would be that federal funding could be reallocated to other programs that historically lacked federal federal funding in the past. Now over to Evelyn with the economic lens. Thanks, Brianna. My research led me to conclude that federal budget cuts to NASA are feasible and would benefit the economy due to increased competition. Competition in this instance would be to reach the same goal of technological advancements in space, but at a more efficient rate. Based on my research, the incorporation of private companies into the space industry results in less government budgetary expenditures as well as increased innovation. Business professor Matthew Weinzero writes about the increasing outside investment in the space industry which has gone from $500 million annually to $2.5 billion. More outside investment means less government expenses because resources are already being provided by an outside source. Historian and journalist Robert Zimmerman writes about the increased innovation that stems from the incorporation of private companies, with SpaceX's Falcon 1 costing between $6 million and $12 million to launch, while NASA shuttles can cost between $30 million and $500 million. Um, as seen in this graph, Pew Research data displays a similar trend with SpaceX's Falcon 9 costing up to nine times less to launch than the NASA shuttle. One solution as proposed by Juris Doctorate candidate Peter Mano is to use prize competitions to incentivize continued research and development of NASA shuttles. This is basically sparking competition on a smaller scale. An implication of this would be decreased spending in NASA due to the increased motivation of its employees to make technological breakthroughs. This is especially worthwhile considering that NASA's annual budget is still $19.9 billion. However, like most solutions, this one has its limitations. The motivation of the employees to make breakthroughs will be limited considering that the competition between them is still within the same program. Now to Curtis with our counterargument through scientific lens. Thanks, Evelyn. Despite the several downsides proposed to uh, stop the funding to NASA, NASA should continue to receive federal funding to expedite the amount of public benefit that stems from its research. 
Since NASA is a government-funded agency, there's no desire within the organization for profit, opening up the availability for NASA's research to directly benefit the public. Public service is clearly one of NASA's core values as shown through its many missions to map and observe the planet Earth. One of such missions is the Orbiting Carbon Observatory, whose mission is to measure, quote, atmospheric carbon dioxide with resolution, precision, and coverage, unquote. And the Atmospheric Infrared Sounder mission, whose job is to, quote, support climate research. Another way NASA helps benefit the public is through planetary defense and its mission named the Double Asteroid Redirection Test, or DART for short. This mission's purpose is to assess the viability of asteroid redirection missions in the future and to, quote, defend against potential future asteroid impacts, end quote. NASA satellites also finally provide essential services that humans use daily, such as GPS services and worldwide telephone reception. Mark Rober, former NASA engineer, says that, quote, GPS makes it so that we can get driving directions on our phone, end quote. These directions are essential for helping people commute to work or just going on vacation. These, these services in conjunction with one another help benefit the public and life on Earth. However, despite NASA's effort to aid the public, many of these functions could be carried out more cost-effectively by private companies. NASA's space shuttle was used to launch payloads into low Earth orbit and could cost up to $1.5 billion. SpaceX now does the exact same thing with their Falcon 9 rocket for around $166 million, which is a $1.3 billion difference. According to Robert Zimmerman, author of 100 journal, more than 100 journal articles about space, says that in the past, NASA's cheapest rockets could cost around $100 million, whereas the SpaceX Falcon 5 rocket costed around $16 million. These drastic price gradients only further prove that NASA should cease to receive federal funding. Now I'll be turning it over to Brianna with our team solution. Thanks, Curtis. Though all of our previously proposed solutions could possibly solve the debate over whether or not NASA should continue to receive federal funding, they all have limitations. So our group came up with a team solution. Our team solution is that cooperation between NASA and private space companies should continue to increase. As mentioned earlier, there is already cooperation between public and private space companies, but continuing to increase the cooperation would allow less federal funding to be needed to be given to NASA. A limitation of this solution would be that no public benefits would be given to NASA, would be given, no public benefits would be received from NASA, such as asteroid redirection program, which allows asteroids to be detected and redirected so that they will not come in contact with Earth. And an implication would be that other programs would be able to receive more federal funding. An example of this would be the National Science Foundation. Though science advancements would not, be being, would not be made through NASA, they would still be able to be made through other programs, such as the National Science Foundation. So our group came to the conclusion that NASA should continue to be defunded because federal funding could be better used, to, in, better used for other programs that would directly benefit the American public. Okay, folks, uh, we're gonna go our right to left uh, here on the camera. So, Bree, we'll start with you. Uh, reflecting on your partner's work, which one had the greatest impact on your overall understanding of the problem? Okay, so I think that Curtis's work had the most impact on my overall research because he argued from the opposite lens, the opposite point of view that both me and Evelyn did. So I was able to see his side of the argument through the scientific lens and be able to use it in my research and have a more rounded um, view of our topic to better argue my side of my research. Okay. Thank you. Evelyn, uh, what's an example of a compelling argument from one of your peers' as individual reports that you decided to exclude from the presentation? Well, our situation is actually a little bit unique. Um, both of their information, we didn't actually exclude an argument from theirs. Um, Brianna only had two and Curtis was our counterargument. We had all of those points included in our presentation. What they decided to exclude was the amount of evidence and putting voices in conversation. Um, what we did actually exclude was something from mine, which was a little bit of research on the pre-existing cooperation between um, NASA and privately owned companies. I feel like if we did include that, that would have given our presentation a little bit more context, but considering the time limits we have, 
we just decided to avoid it. Okay, all right, thanks. Curtis, having finished your project, what, if anything, do you consider to be a gap in your team's research, and if addressed, would make you feel more confident about your conclusion? Um, I feel like we didn't really address the historical um, benefits that NASA has made in space, such as missions to the moon or um, getting to, to create the ISS. I feel like if we would have analyzed the advance advancements that NASA has made in space travel since its founding, it would have definitely um, enhanced our viewpoint on okay. NASA's funding. Okay, thank you.